feeling about my money, I would've went dummy and big grand. But I got this shit locked up, can't nobody stop us, your nigga. I'm tasting that big bag. Everybody rhyming, they clutching the fire on. My younger day wants on ride for him. He making we up, and I hope that the. What it do with your boy OTC Ro, and welcome back to Rude Reviews, man. Welcome back to the show. Make sure you like, share, comment. And subscribe, roast, dislike, do the most, man. Hit the notification button so you know when your boys upload to the two. Hashtag rude ones in the comment section for a shout out on Friday, which is tomorrow. And every single Friday after that, man, we're on the way to 10,000 of them things. But if we get to 15,000 before December 31st, your boy has to chop down the hair. Anyways, man, this is a subscriber video. This is the, t the 10 upcoming future technologies. That could redefine history, you know? So, uh, I wonder what they are. We're going to give it a look. Here we go, man. Technology is always progressing, and gaming is often the place where we see a lot of the new stuff manifest first. Hi, folks. It's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 upcoming technologies that could redefine gaming. <laughs> My fault. On this app, I can only see so much of the title so i just had to guess what the rest of it was but it's redefining gaming gaming history number 10 intel has gone ahead and shown that it is going to be releasing gpus like dedicated gpus and i'm gonna go ahead and say that that's not super inspiring on its own on account all of their integrated solutions uh, let's just say it's not good that being said intel is now talking about a fully compliant DirectX 12 graphics card with apparently new architecture and well it just brings more competition to the graphics card space which as far as flagship products there isn't a lot. This might not sound like big news on account they haven't really put out a lot of great graphics processors in the past and their integrated solutions but Intel is a company with infinite money. If they want to research and develop something that is better they can and that makes me interested in what they do because if they actually follow through on that we could get a really good graphics card. Number nine Nvidia showed up a demo using their Quadro RTX 6000 that included real-time ray tracing, which if you're not particularly familiar, we've done videos on how some graphics techniques are done. It's essentially a physics simulation of light. From both the player's perspective and all the light sources in the scene, rays are sent out, and wherever that intersects, calculations are made, and a much more accurate representation of how light, shadows, and reflections work is displayed on screen. Ray tracing is a technique that's considered pretty harsh on your hardware. It's used in professional level 3D rendering like in movies and being that it can take days or even weeks to render out scenes. But Nvidia has created both hardware and software that work in tandem that simplify the ray tracing process and make a much less detailed ray trace look significantly better. In other words, they send out less. So I think I think I know what this is. You know how in scenes and movies, especially when PlayStation 2 came out, the scene would be hella realistic, but when you start playing the game, it like downgraded from the scene. I think that's what this is talking about, how those scenes can 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 be played into games, but I think for it to be in an actual gameplay, it would take a, a longer time. You know what I'm saying? Some games still do that. that the, the scene is like more realistic than the actual gameplay rays from both the light source and the camera, but it doesn't look like they did. The result is fantastic. The demo looks literally like a production level pre-rendered animation. However, it is real time. It's running on the hardware that they've developed, and I can't wait to see games that look that good. Number eight, Samsung introduced four terabyte SSDs a few years ago, but they've been doing research and development since and have come up with something that makes them affordable. When Samsung first introduced them, they were $1,500 though, but they're using a new technology called QLC or quad level cell solid state drives. These QLC SSDs are about to enter mass production, and although we don't have an official price from them yet, it's apparently going to be significantly lower. Apparently quad level cells have usually been avoided because they tend to sacrifice a little bit of speed, but Samsung is saying that their QLC technology will retain the same read and write speeds of its other SSDs, and that's really encouraging. Number seven, a full haptic bodysuit called the Tesla suit that simulates full body touch in VR by quote unquote zapping your nerves 
is kind of both exciting and terrifying at the same time. Their intent is to make it so that while you're in virtual reality, you actually feel the things that are in virtual reality through electronic stimulation of your nervous system. Now, it isn't as if this is just shocking you or anything. It is an established technology that is actually used in physical therapy, but at the same time, it does make me... I was here. <laughs> I was a just... About to say that, man. What about it? Just remind me of the Matrix, bro. It remind me of the Matrix. So, if you can feel wind, you can feel water, and all that shit. What happens if you get hit? You know what I'm saying? Hard. You really gonna get a bruise? Like, you really gonna feel that? Feel that? Like, I don't know about this one. Putting on a full body suit just to play a video game. Nah, I might have to skip that one. That ain't for me. That ain't for me. Me think of what could go wrong wearing one of these things. Now, obviously, electrical shocks aren't going to actually be able to stimulate what a bullet feels like or anything like that. So I'm not particularly worried about that type of a thing. But let's just go ahead and say this. The way people cheat in games now often involves sabotage of other players. So now that doesn't mean I think that we shouldn't do stuff like this. I think that the more immersive, the more real virtual reality actually feels in more than one way, the more interesting it actually is. But it does come with some reservations I think are worth thinking about. Still, the idea of actually feeling a virtual world, truthfully, it sounds amazing. Number six, Intel showed off a five gigahertz, 28 core CPU. Now, there has been a large amount to do about this in that Intel most likely overclocked and there's most likely not going to be a 28 core CPU with all the cores running at five gigahertz at any point in the near future. But the fact that they did it even in a show, even with the fact that it was using a pretty intense water chiller. And some people noted that there were four 12 volt CPU power connectors on the motherboard this thing was running on. And what we were looking at is definitely not something that's gonna go into production. That being said, seeing it happen is cool as hell. Number five, we've been talking about the next generation of consoles. We've heard about Xbox Scarlet and PlayStation 5 at this point. And we do think that Xbox Scarlet is probably coming first. Apparently there's gonna be two consoles consoles, a streaming one, and a traditional box full of stuff. Now, the streaming one, I just think that's really interesting. Now, I've played games on streaming services, but you also have to consider the idea that Microsoft has been working on game streaming technology that isn't just sending a video of the game to your console. It seems absurd that the cloud computing that's been created for Crackdown 3 would just be used for that game. It seems like since it's going to be using the cloud platform that Microsoft has been developing, that there could be other things that it gets used for? Maybe this is part of it? I don't know, but it could be a really big change in the console gaming industry, and it may be that we see the Netflix for games happen under Microsoft's banner. Or it may not. Who knows? It would... So it would be a platform where you can only stream games or it's, it's easy access. It, it goes straight to the streaming. It's connected to the streaming. Is that what I'm getting here? Either way, it sounds real dope, but it's confusing a little bit. Be cool. Number four is HoloLens 2.0. Not as though the HoloLens is really a widely adopted product, but as we see more and more of this, the augmented reality almost seems like a more interesting idea to me than the virtual reality. To add things to the real world that you can use, maybe productivity things, maybe not, maybe game things. I don't know, the Minecraft demo they did for HoloLens was pretty cool, but we're hearing rumors that involved actual artificial intelligence being added into to the HoloLens 2.0. And supposedly we're gonna see the HoloLens 2 hit in the end of 2018, but I would say it's probably gonna be around next year. That being said, the more on this, the better. I mean, mixed reality, augmented reality, whatever you wanna call it is, in my opinion, one of the cooler ideas for the type of technology. Now this one, this one right here look a little dope. You get the, and you can see through that shit. And it's really like that? Like, God damn, that's crazy. Yeah, this one is dope. I'm rocking with this one. 
we've been talking about with virtual reality for a while now. And although Magic Leap 1 is already out, I've seen some people talk about it as though it's got a ways to go still. And I suspect that even the HoloLens 2.0 will be similar to that, but it's on the way. Number three, Razer has a project called Ariana, which goes beyond Razer Chroma. Instead of just being multicolored lighting that adapts to everything you're doing in a game to being full-fledged video projection that makes the game fill up your room. It calibrates to the room that you are in, including all of the objects, and figures out how to project your game as if it expands from your monitor. Now, this technology was announced a while ago, and it still isn't out, but parts of it have been making it into smaller pieces of technology, like their Chroma integration for the Philips Hue lighting. That being said, when they get to the point of doing specifically the projector, that's going to make games a real fun. Number two is a shirt that acts as a controller. It's called eSkin. It's by a startup in Japan called Zenima. We've actually talked about it in other videos. It apparently will work very interestingly alongside VR products in order to actually immerse you into the... Now, now, I'm all for like glasses and maybe you got to put a strap on, but when you got to take your clothes off and put on a video game, nah. I, I I don't know I don't I don't know how safe that is I, I don't know just me it just sounds weird you know what I'm saying anything can go wrong so putting all that on taking all your clothes off and putting a whole suit on or a whole top on it's a little iffy world. As these types of games get further and further ahead, we are going to need ways to, well, more realistically insert the player into the world. Just moving your hands around with a couple of controllers works for certain things, but not for other things. Having smart clothes is an interesting piece of technology that really could change everything as far as your in-game representation. And although it's definitely not ready for prime time, it does give us a little bit of a peek into the future on that front. And finally, number one is quantum computing. We have made a video about this a few years ago. It's just kind of a cursory look at it, not meant to be a deep dive in the technical aspects of it. But I think we did a decent job explaining why it's not exactly like going to be something that is a graphical thing. However, artificial intelligence and things like that could be very, very enhanced by a CPU style computer that's 100 million times faster. That, I mean, is a bit of an exaggeratory number. There's a lot of hype around quantum computing, and there's also a lot of debate over exactly how it will slot into the gaming world. Frankly, quantum theory is not even complete itself. So at this point, it's all mainly speculation, including what we've said on this topic. However, the raw power we talk about that's possible with quantum computing is impressive to say the very least. And as time goes by, we have a better idea that it actually may move into the space. We'll see. Everything we've talked about today is incredibly interesting, though, and could bring about some massive developments in the gaming world. But what excites you the most? Leave us a comment, let us know. And if you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at Falcon Hero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Rings. That, uh, that was good. That was good. I'm most excited about the Xbox. Uh, PlayStation 5. I'm not going to get PlayStation Pro. That's the new one. Uh, I'm thinking about getting the Xbox X, the new Xbox. I'm going to always pick up on the new Xbox. But I'm, I might get a PlayStation 5. Just just think, just varies. I have to uh, research it. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited about the new Xbox is coming out. Anyways, man, let me know what you're excited about. Let me know if you did like the video. Let me know if you didn't like the video. This is your boy, OTC Ro. I appreciate you rocking with your boy. And I will see you when I see you. Go.